Huka ratu sesida. Any day I lose my fire, I will step down. I will tell you, please run. Please go somewhere and find a place to stay on fire. Please forgive me. Ask my wife. I will not, I will not let you lose. This altar will keep burning. Anytime the fire goes, I will tell you. I will take my family and I will run away. Welcome to Fire and the Spirit Channel, the page where the mysteries, the dimensions and the divinity of God are being revealed. Catching the fire of God and ministering in the power of God is one thing, but remaining on fire for God consistently for long is another thing. A lot of believers find it difficult to remain on fire for God for a long period of time, and there are many things that can lead to that occurrence, and in most cases, it's spiritual. Many still pray in tongues, and minister the gospel before men, but the fire of God is not there, no burden, no hunger as it used to be and their altar is very dry. Such people are supposed to be out of the pulpit, and not preaching, until they get back the fire of God. The Bible clearly states in the book of Matthew 24 verse 12, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. The bond servant of Christ in this captivating segment shockingly disclosed what he will do if his spiritual lifestyle is no longer on fire for God. He said that he will not deceive the congregation and that he will do something unexpected immediately. Share this post with a friend or a minister that needs to hear this. Join our partnership community using the join button showing on your screen. Follow us on Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube page to get more notifications from Fire and the Spirit. Any day I lose my fire, I will step down. I will tell you, please run. Please go somewhere and find a place to stay on fire. Please forgive me. Ask my wife. I will not, I will not let you lose. This altar will keep burning. Any time the fire goes, I will tell you. I will take my family and I will run away. And I will go into it. I will just I will not deceive you. I'd rather die. I'd rather die than to deceive you. Or to cause any one of you here lose your faith. I know the cost to be a man to be a man of God. I know what it costs. I know what it should cost. Me. I've never chased any woman in this church. No, not for one day. I've never been a stumbling block to any woman in this church. My hands are clean before God and before man. I don't see anyone. I don't care. Once you are in the position of leadership, you cannot open yourself up to be used by the beast to extinguish the glory of God and to cause men to stumble and take the mark. You cannot. It's the worst sin you can ever commit as a minister. Whether you're a preacher or a worshiper or a coordinator or a leader in a local ministry, you are accountable to what you do. You serve with fear. The fear of God. This life is very momentary. Very. Where is Billy Graham? It's gone. She's standing before God right now. Wake up. When you know eternity is calling, you'll be a fool to compromise. you fight. Even though you've stumbled, you get up on your feet. Close the doors. Clean up. I'm doing this not to discourage you, but to tell you that please rise up in your spirit. The Bible says, yes, you can fall as a righteous man, but you also have the power to rise up completely. Amen. And shut the Shout amen, sons of God. Amen. Let's give God a big hand of praise. The bond servant of Christ, 
further disclosed that the mark of the beast that concerns or affects believers are carnality, a watered-down prayer life and the stronghold of vanity. He said that if Satan should get hold of him, he could destroy the flocks that God has kept under his care, which would be failure in ministry for him. The sixes for believers are strongholds of carnality. The stronghold of vanity. The stronghold of watered down prayer life. Imagine Satan gets me. Do you know how many people he's going to destroy through me? So that's why I would rather lose you and keep many. Get my point? You can understand that, that my life is connected to hundreds of thousands of people whose faith are rising in the spirit. So as a first reference, as a first fruit of this mighty move of God, it is important that it, it is kept holy. Remember, Jesus was the first fruit of our faith, of our righteousness, right? Of our salvation, the first fruit out of the dead. So he was holy and righteous. And he says to Mary, he said, that matter, either Mary or Mary, he said, don't touch me, for I have not yet ascended or presented myself to the Father. And he was the first fruit. So you can't touch me, because if you touch me, you defile me. And then the first, once the first fruit is defiled, then of course the rest of, of the fruits will be defiled. So he had to present himself to the Father as the holy, undefiled first fruit. So that the root is pure and holy. Ministers are first fruits. You're a type of a first fruit. But there is the first fruit. Just like as we are shepherds. Yet the chief shepherd is Jesus. We are in his place. He has deployed us as his angels, servants. So to the angel of the church of Ephesus, right? Who are we? Messengers, shepherds, under the shepherd, from the shepherd. He says, before he ascended, he first descended, and he gave men gifts. Some he gave apostles, some he gave prophets, some he gave evangelists, some he gave pastors, and some he gave teachers. The call of Christ. But there are false apostles deployed as beasts to cause God's people to take the mark of sin, the mark of unrighteousness, the mark of fornication, the mark of infiltrated faith in Christ. So Satan has sent his own apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. That's what Christ is saying. So the beast is in the church. Not as an economic global beast or the beast of one world government. The beast of compromise in the house of God. We have no business with the beast in the world because we are God's people. We are his bride. Is someone hearing me? We, we have no Listen, these things that you're talking about, the book of Revelation, you're, you, you, you're afraid, you're afraid. He has no business. You are already seated with him in the heavenlies. Amen. Hallelujah. Is somebody getting my point? Yes. These things are not applicable unto you. In the days of Noah, even though his judgment was there, Noah was preserved. Even though God judged Sodom and Gomorrah, Lot and his family, we are exclusively priests. So don't be afraid of the beast is coming. There's going to be earthquake. There's going to be killing. It's none of your business. It does not apply to you at all. With your eyes shall you see the destruction of the wicked. Amen. To transform a life by this message, you might want to share this video with them. Join our partnership community using the join button showing on the screen or comment section of this page. Follow and subscribe to FIRE and the Spirit channel and hit the notification bell icon to get updates of new videos from us. Tap on the videos showing on your screen to watch another captivating content from this page. Stay blessed.